Hello guys, my name's Simon Caruso. I'm the host of the Limitless Man podcast and I'm going to be on the online prosperity show with Prosper Tadovinga. And in today's episode, we're gonna talk about actualizing what is your limitless potential, what that might look like for you and building a lifestyle through property itself and how to actually do that. Looking forward to this guys. Thank you so much for having me on for the opportunity. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you none other than the limitless man himself, Simon. Simon, how are you doing today? Very well, Prosper. Thanks for having me on, man. Awesome to be here. Fantastic. Well, I really did enjoy our episode. I'm going to actually, um, you know, have it in our show notes where we were talking about everything and anything to do with creating a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But today we are actually coming in, um, you know, with a totally different topic, but it helps people that are in the business and entrepreneurial space to actually build wealth and create their dream lifestyle through the power of property. Now, I got a question. When I came on your podcast, I I was just in awe of what you've done, where you've been, and what you've created. First of all, tell me how you actually came up with the name The Limitless Man. The Limitless Man really was, it's a bit of a metaphor. So it's a metaphor for what we're capable of doing. And it's about actualizing our potential. So understanding first what our potential is, then actualizing it. And so I was actually doing a, I was doing a program last year through one of my mentors and the term limitless potential came up and I'm like, wow, that just really resonated with me. And so for me, it just stuck. It just, I had this vision in my mind and I wanted to build a metaphor around that and really make it about, you know, what is our potential? And how do we actualize our potential? Because it's different for everybody, you know, and our potential really is what we want our lifestyle to look like. But there are, there are many layers to this though, Prosper, because in order to understand what our potential is, we need belief, we need desire, and then we need clarity as well. So they're the three things. And I've been obsessed with you know, my own beliefs and understanding how they were formed since I was a child, you know, I'm a first generation Australian, mum and dad came from another country. So there's a bit of a story in itself there. And there were a couple of voids when I was a child, which have shown up now in my highest values, you know, one of them being uh, wealth creation and wanting to actually generate income without having to work as hard physically for that income. So that was one one part of, you know, actualizing my potential and the other part was you know deep connection as well um i was fortunate enough to have great parents who, who gave me everything really they provided everything but they brought a lot of beliefs with them from another country and although the economy was set up much better for them here those beliefs could have been different had they realized what those beliefs were and they could have done things differently, which I realized as well, you know, so the limitless man really was formed because I wanted to fill that void I had when I was a child and actually learn to create wealth, learn to go from status quo to lifestyle, really, and go and, and a process to how to do that. And so for the last six or seven years, my life's really been about how to how to perfect that how to actually take a process or take someone through a process over a period of time where we can actually achieve that and paint the picture for what that's going to look like for that particular person because success is very different for everyone prosper you know some people some people just want to spend a lot more time being the best family person they can be other people want experiences you know other people they want to go on holidays they want to send their kids to the best schools if, if that's something that they want to do but it's very different for everybody. And I think just understanding that up front is, is first and foremost before then, you know, creating a plan to make that happen and actualizing that. Fantastic. And I really appreciate you bringing the whole subject of status quo and societal expectations because, you know, coming from a family 
that maybe had a one track mind as to what to do and what their kids should do. How did you actually then manage to go um, not alongside what they were, um, you know, expecting or wanting or at some point demanding of yeah. you, <laughs> of their kids um, when they landed well, in Australia? Well, I'll tell you what, anyone listening from, a, you know, a European background or any ethnic background, really, education was massive. That really got pushed onto me as a kid. So it took me some time to realise there's more than one way to actually skin a cat, as they say. You know, you don't have to tr go down that traditional road. You can if you enjoy it, but it was forced down my throat as a young child. And so I never knew what I wanted to do ever with my life. And I'll just say this, you know, it was forced down my throat in a positive way, in, in coming from the right space, because my parents never had that opportunity. So they wanted me to take advantage of something they never had. So it was all about progression through school, making sure I got good grades. So then ultimately I could get into university, get a good job and make good money. So that's pretty much what it came down to. And for me, the realization happened going through, going through the last two years of school, I had no idea, no idea what I wanted to do, but I felt I had to go to university to become something, to become anything, to become successful because the way I define success today, wasn't the way I defined it back then. And so it took me a couple of years of trial and error. And I remember getting going to university. And the first year I was there, I I didn't rock up to anything. I was uh, I was having fun, I was socializing, I was doing all this stuff. And I realized then that I was in the wrong place. So then I had to transfer from there to TAFE where I thought I might be better off. But again, I had no clarity. I had no idea what I wanted to do. So. I realized that I just wasn't built for that. And so it took me many years though. And even after getting a job, my initial job in the telecommunications industry and working my way up to different positions and thinking that was the answer maybe. It was about climbing the corporate ladder, but that wasn't the answer for me either. And it was only until I gained clarity on what my, my values were as a person and what I actually wanted to do with my life without letting other people influence those values or overlaying their values on top of mine, which took me a long, long time to figure that out. And so it's very easy to get caught in the status quo if you allow people to influence your decision making, you know, what you value from most important to least important. So it became a process where once I realized that wasn't the answer either, I just started doing a lot of personal development. I attended a lot of workshops, a lot of seminars, some of these people I'm now friends with today, mentors that have become friends. And so if it wasn't for that personal development and that investing in myself and having that mentality, I definitely wouldn't have got the clarity and the realization that I was going down that wrong road. And so fortunately I got myself around the right people who, and was able to correct that. Absolutely. So, I mean, obviously your parents wanted you to go through some sort of education and you went on and did those two years of university and then you dropped out. But later yeah. on, you spent far too much more money, which is like over $100,000 and yeah. far too much more time doing personal development. Isn't that all education? It is. It's education, but not the traditional form of education that was rammed down my throat. Okay. So... And that's a good point that you bring up. It is education. And I think it's the most valuable education that there is. And I know you've spoken highly of this yourself. I've heard you speak about this before too. Self-education, investing in yourself, I believe is the number one investment before anything, uh, which is why when I started to do that, things became clearer and it becomes easier to make decisions because when you're not distracted by what anyone else is doing, you can make you can make quicker decisions, which is what high achievers do. You know, high achievers have this ability to just to make a decision without wasting too much time. And that's just because they've got the clarity. They're not necessarily any smarter. They don't have things that we haven't got or anyone else hasn't got. It's just that ability to go, this is where I'm going. So every, all bets are off for everything else. And the focus is, is laser, laser like. Absolutely. So you spent enough money and time to actually create the limitless men but you've done that mostly through 
um, you know, the vehicle of property. Tell us how you sort of got started in that sort of space and where it is now and, you know, yeah. how you're helping other people achieve that too. So where it started was as another thing that's very, very highly spoken about is getting a house and, you know, not renting, you know, you can't rent when, you know, I, it was just condemned when I was a kid, you have to buy a house. That was it, you know, so it's, uh, I knew I had to buy a house. Uh, that was at least what I was told to do. And when I saw my parents buy a house, they, you know, they emphasized the importance of paying the house off as quickly as possible. And and watching other people around me, obviously the traditional way to do that is to get a, to buy a house and you pay it off over 30 years. Okay. Now, fortunately I met someone who actually ended up marrying my cousin at the age of 22. And I was discussing, discuss, discussing this with him at the time, because that was sort of when I was ready to, to buy my first property. And I said to him, look, I don't want to, I don't want to wait 30 years to pay off my house. I want to make this happen sooner rather than later. So I started following his lead. He was quite astute when it came to property investing and property development. And they're, and they're two different vehicles um, and they have strategies within each strategy, but I'll, I'll get to that a little bit later. But, but basically what I wanted to do was pay it off as soon as possible by using his knowledge and taking that and applying that knowledge. And I did that by just buying a house, buying a block of land, building a house on there initially and selling that block of, and selling that house upon completion. And I made $70,000 uh, doing that. And that would have been in around 12 months. I actualized that. So, and when that happened, Prosper, then I started to really believe, okay, how long would it take me to save $70,000, you know, which is what my parents would have done. Okay. So I realized then that there is a much more efficient way to, to go about this. And that initial purchase was what I call the property investment strategy. I learned something called property development, which is what I ended up doing um, after that, where you're basically buying a site or acquiring control of a site and you're turning that into, you know, two, three or four different houses or dwellings, you know, so that's much more powerful again a lot more detail a lot more work going in that up front but basically what happened was you're not waiting for the market to actually move you're manufacturing profit into the actual product itself so once i figured out how to do that um yeah obviously within five years i was able to own my own house outright which was was pretty i was pretty happy with that because i was i think i was 29 by the time that happened and so yeah, I just realized that, wow, what a, what an opportunity to actually, you know, now do this, keep, keep doing this, but also how do I actually help other people with trying to achieve a similar outcome? Now, whether it's because they want to own their own more, or want to own their own house or whether it's something else, it don't necessarily have to mean that you have to own your own house. I don't believe that's uh, viable for everybody because again, we all have different values. So it just sort of, it, it, it came from that prosper where I'd wanted to help other people create a lifestyle using that vehicle based on what I'd learned from, from my experience back then. Absolutely. Now, Simon, I'm sort of picking up a trend in the things that you've done and sort of achieved. And the most common denominator has been the power and influence of other people in the form yeah. of mentors and the actual self-education. Now, can you just maybe touch up on the very essence of having people that can give you the clarity that you keep talking about um, and how that has actually sort of uh, moved you more than you would have done by your own, by yourself? Well, first, I don't think you can do it on your own, to be honest. So categorically, if you're trying to do it on your own, I think you're making a big mistake because you're going to make mistakes that you don't even know you're making. And that can be very, very costly mistakes. But the power of getting around people is that, you know, one of my mentors says this to me all the time, proximity is power. So what I mean by that is people have the ability to teach and educate you and give you insights to things that you would normally not be aware of. So by nature, we love to hang around the same group of people. Okay. So we have a herd like mentality. We love hanging around people that are like us with similar values. And, you know, if you look at your five closest friends and you probably heard this before as well, Prosper, generally that 
incomes are going to be similar, their interests are going to be similar, um, what they value is going to be similar. So it's important to hang around different people and get different perspectives just to, well, A, to give you a better insight what's possible, but B, to lead you so that then you don't have to make those same mistakes that you would otherwise make if you're on your own. And I think when you're trying to transition out of something, the status quo, let's call it to, you know, something that's going to resemble more of the lifestyle you want, it's going to be hard work and it's going to be uncomfortable and you're going to have to get around the right people to actually help you do that. And I think it's an awesome way to change your beliefs when you, when you hang around different people and you have that mentorship and you have that proximity of power like we spoke about before because it's just going to happen a lot faster than it would normally happen if you're trying to do it on your own. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And like you mentioned, you know, um, I think it was Seth Gordon that came up with a statement that people like us do things like this. So whoever you are around, you know, the cars they buy, the houses they um, pick up on. And if people aren't in the property development space, you also start working like that. But there's a lot of attention to detail that goes into, you know, maybe like a development, um, yeah. um, you know, uh, deal or, you know, property in and of itself. You have to know the figures, know the yields and things of that nature. But from what I've heard from you, you know, you, you, you don't pay that much attention to detail. I mean, there's a time when your wife, unloaded um asked you to unload the dishwasher <laughs> and put everything on the kitchen table and she specifically asked you to put out the plates and that's all you did you know yeah. isn't that something that would um you know affect the actual success that you intend to have in in a development um you know uh, project yeah yeah look i'm quite literal at times and so there, there's a that's a funny story she was in a hurry she had an appointment to go to and she unloaded all these dishes on the bench and she said, put the plates away. Now I was thinking about something else at the time and <laughs> I literally put the plates away and I left everything else there. But in saying that, you know, in my defense, I was thinking about something else at the time and she did say, <laughs> put the plates away. So I put the plates away, you know, so. Simon, we're going to have to get her on the show so we can clarify yeah. this, uh, <laughs> this story. <laughs> but there's one thing now, Simon, that really also is being weaved around your your topics uh it's all to do with clarity okay if we really start from where you started you know when you finished high school you had no clear or defined route of what you were going to be doing but as time went on you you learned what you learned you had the mentors that you had and now clarity became um you know such such a focal point in what you um have been doing how important is somebody uh how, how important is it that somebody is really clear on what the end goal is so that they can actually achieve um you know whatever they intend to 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 achieve in life well i think you need you need some sort of direction you know uh, you need clarity because without clarity you can't make decisions so it's really difficult to make decisions if you don't know where you're going now that's not to say that you might start off going in one direction and as you're making decisions, you realize you might be going in the wrong direction. Okay, but that's fine too, but you need to be going in a direction. You need some sort of clarity initially so that you can start moving. And I think what I used to do and what I see other people do is lack of clarity creates indecision, it creates procrastination and paralysis by analysis. So in a sense, you're not actually doing anything. You're just too scared to make a decision because you don't know what the right or the wrong decision is. And so what I think clarity does is it gives you the opportunity to make decisions to move towards a, a certain goal, a certain outcome, you know, a certain desire that you have. And I think that's why it's so important. And it's so difficult when you haven't had clarity to understand how to actually acquire it. And this is where the work comes in, your understanding who you are as a person, your values as a person, you know, my values aren't going to be your values, Prosper, or the next person's values, okay? So they're, they're quite unique to you. But when you understand yourself, you understand what your strengths are and what you actually desire the most and what's going to be most important to least important, you can actually begin to build clarity of lifestyle then and you can begin to make decisions to get you from where you are to what that's going to look like. And visualization I love visualization. I love imagining myself 
you know, as if I've already got the thing or, or that lifestyle that I want, because just having that feeling of it, having that, that feeling that I can actually see it, I can feel it, it just gives you this intrinsic uh, reward in a sense that you've already got it. And so you become even more powerful in your decision making process now. And I know you've spoken about you know, the power of, of visualization before as well and how, how critical and how important it is. But it's just about being curious again, like you are when you're a little kid. You know, when I watch my kids play outside, they're curious little, they're curious little creatures. You know, they, um, they don't hold themselves back. They're not scared to try anything. And I think with that, when you're not scared to try things and you're open, you can develop clarity pretty quickly. Absolutely. Now, obviously, Simon, we might have somebody watching this show and they're now sitting at the edge of their seat, mm. frothing at their mouth, really wanting to find out more about how, you know, they can maybe connect with you. What would be the best way that, you know, um, people can sort of start the journey of becoming limitless with you? Yeah. They can reach out to me. Look, I offer anyone listening to this, um, I'll happily have a, um, I'll have a 15 minute chat with them. Okay. So if they'd like to do that, and if you're comfortable with that, we can set that up um, with a link or, or, or thereabouts. That's fine. LinkedIn, Facebook, um, our website will be up and running shortly as well. The limitlessman.com will be up and running pretty soon. So look, either of those platforms is fine. Uh, feel free to reach out and I'm, I'm more than happy to have a chat because it really, it comes down to every individual's different. And, you know, some people might be ready to actually move into their journey and some might not be. It just depends where you are at the moment. Absolutely. Now, Simon, I mean, obviously we could go on and on. There's limitless topics and everything else that we can talk about, but we are living in one of the hardest uh, economic times, um, you know, of 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 the history of of humanity. You know, look at the last couple of years and look at maybe the next three years. There's a there's talks of inflation. There's a pandemic that nobody really understands whether it's gone or it's there or what whatever is happening is just lingering somewhere there. And um, you know, the property market is being um you know uh being hit by several blows either the people are scared to get into it the the monetary side is also not making it easy what sort mm. of advice would you give to people that are sitting on the fence and not quite sure how they can actually literally start their dream lifestyle through the power of property based on what they're hearing yeah. or seeing uh the streets talking about um you know that endeavor yeah I think the first thing to understand like, is that what happened in the pandemic is is a one off thing. So obviously that's it was a, unfortunate that it happened, but obviously um, no one saw it coming. And so things happen. And normally I'll, I'll say this. Normally there's around 300,000 people a year that come to Australia internationally that actually move into into this country. OK, so that pretty much went to zero. Well, it did go to zero during the during the during the pandemic. But what we're starting to see now is we're starting to see people coming coming into the country. Now, I think the last time I checked, it was around 25,000 people over the last 12 months. I think that entered. So we're way off where we were pre-COVID at around that sort of 250 to 3,000, 250 to 300,000 people a year. But what we're going to see is we're going to see people starting to come back into, into the country. Okay, so that's going to create demand and that's going to create a market for, for property. Now, as far as interest rates, and I'm not an economist, guys, by the way, it's a big disclaimer. I'm not, yeah, don't take this as financial advice um, because I'm not. But obviously with inflation, which I think is reported, it's going to be reported to be around 7 7 7.5% at its peak, which is, um, I believe, next month it'll peak. Um, it, what they're doing, obviously, the government is they're trying to put interest rates up to curb that. Now, that's not going to keep happening. They believe in the next sort of 12 months to 18 months, that's going to actually steady. And you know a healthy inflation rate is that sort of two to three percent mark which i think we'll see in the next 12 to 18 months so i think what's going to happen is things are going to settle down a bit things will cool off and go back to sort of you know that normality that they were before before COVID happened but i think that people are going to come to this country okay people are going to move here that's going to create demand people need somewhere to live okay and there's a whole series of markers and things that I won't get into today because it's quite it's quite technical. Um, but
but there are other factors as well that uh, are at play as well when determining you know whether to buy a property where to buy a property you know the strategy so yeah there, there's there's a lot more to it than that but yeah the gist of it is that eventually people are going to start flocking to this country again and there will be demand oh absolutely i like a, a bit of hope you know to yeah. Um, you know, to end the show. But you know what, Simon, there's so much that we could dive into and I'm hoping that people are taking notes uh, and also looking you up already uh, as to the places where they can find you. Now, as you have um, taken note and as you have been listening, Simon, um, obviously being the host of the Limitless Men podcast, I urge you to go and listen to that um, podcast, especially if you can find my episode there, that will be the only one you need to listen to and you can get a glimpse of <laughs> what his show is all about. But not only is he that, he's a coach and a speaker and he's also helping people identify and actualize their limitless potential. We are here to leave, to learn and to contribute. And if we can leave the best lives that we possibly can, then obviously we need to, you know, have people like Simon just guiding us along the way, um, you know, so that we can actually live to our fullest potential. And as if you, as you have heard, his mission is to inspire others to build wealth and create their dream lifestyle through the power of property. Now, Simon, I can't thank you enough for the time that you took, um, you know, sitting with us on the podcast here and also sharing with us your journey and also your expertise, um, you know, on how be to become limitless. Now, thank you so much, man. I love spending time having these conversations. It's, and you know, it's one of my highest values having these deep connections, these conversations with people like yourself. It's awesome. And yeah, I'll do this anytime. So yeah, thanks for having me on. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. Since I've got you on record and we still have people watching, I would maybe want us to start a series where people can actually maybe four or five videos where we can start, go with the start, the goals, the clarity and everything else to do with property. Would that be something that you'd be interested in, Simon? Absolutely. Yeah, we can make that happen for sure. Absolutely. So you heard him there. Uh, if you're watching right now, the next episode, we'll be talking about the journey that you need to undertake in order to start uh, scale and grow maybe a, a profitable uh, property portfolio or maybe a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I can't thank you enough for your time today, Simon. No, you're welcome. Thanks a lot, man. I really enjoyed it. And yeah, looking forward to connecting again, mate. Absolutely.